הגענו פה חברים מתנועת מאבק סוציאליסטי, וגם מהארגון הבינלאומי, חברים משוודיה, מאירלנד, מארצות הברית ומדרום אפריקה נמצאים איתנו. וזה מזעזע כל פעם מחדש לראות את המציאות של הכיבוש וההתנחלויות במרכז חברון. חשבנו שאולי תהיה לנו אפילו הזדמנות לדון בקצרה על הדרכים לשנות את המצב הזה. Uh, welcome everyone, my name is Zed Karaki, I'm 28 years old, I'm volunteer with this against settlement since 10 years ago, uh, 10 years ago. We have four settlements in the middle of Hebron, yeah. I think you passed from it and you saw it. We have like Abraham Avinu, Beit Romano, Beit Hadass, Aramat Yashai just behind our center. We have around 80, 850 settlers who live in the area, 1,500 soldiers protect them from the Palestinians. You have rights more than us as Palestinians to walk in our, in our city. Not allowed for us as Palestinians to walk in Shahada Street, a few meters from the beginning and a few, a few meters at the end. That's it. But for you as international, as Israeli, you can walk wherever you want without any problem. Uh, Shahada Street closed since 1994 after the massacre. We have a massacre happened in 1994 when Baruch Goldstein did the massacre in Ibrahim in Mosul. In Shohada Street, uh, we have 1,827 shops closed. We have uh, 1,040 apartments uh, 1, apartment empty. For us, if you want to be in this area as Palestinian, you have to be registered at the checkpoint. They will have your ID to check. If you have number, you will be in. If not, they will not let you in. I bring with you the greetings of my organization, the Workers and Socialist Party but also of the entire struggling masses in South Africa today. This has been uh, a journey of, of education, but also of emotion for me in particular, because of the similarities in the struggle of black people for liberation uh, and the struggle of the Palestinians for an end to the dictatorship under which they are living. I have to say that the experience of walking past the checkpoints have brought back memories for me about what it was like, particularly in 1976, when the police came into the townships with helicopter gunships, with armored vehicles, with tear gas, with bullets and so forth. But having said that, I think that the people who have made bold to say that what the Palestinians are being subjected to by the Israeli regime is in many respects worse than what we went through under apartheid. Because the presence of the military in the townships was always but uh, for a temporary period of time to try and quell an uprising in the face of which they ultimately had to retreat. Here, the presence of the military, the uh, enforcement of the occupation has an air of permanency about it. But at the same time, the very fact that what they are doing uh, in throwing all the might that they can against you shows that there's a dumb recognition that your spirit cannot be broken. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity. We are with you uh, and we will do everything that we can to ensure that the struggle for the overthrow of the Israeli capitalism, an end to the occupation and the socialist transformation as a whole is brought to end. Thank you very much. Thank you. Amanda. 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 Viva Youth Against Settlement. Viva. 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 Viva Youth Against Settlements. Viva. 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 Amanda. Viva. Your presence here in, 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 in Hebron, in Palestine, in, in Youth Against Settlements house means a lot to us, especially as a South African who suffered so much from racism, uh, apartheid back in, in your home. Um, we are facing the same. Maybe as you said, it's even much more what, what, from what, what you face in your life. They don't allow us to fix, they don't allow us to build, they don't allow even ambulances to be here. Why? Because they don't want to see Palestinians living here. They do a few things to you. If you are living in such an area, they come to you and they offer you money to live. If you refuse the money, the second thing they do to you, they offer you again money. Third time, again money. If you refuse to leave, 
they come to you and they start sending settlers to attack you and they start putting pressure on you and then not allowing you to have a permit to do anything you are, they are, don't allow you sometimes to checkpoint if you need to have visitors to your house they prevent you because now no one is able to enter without having a number and having a number you should be living inside if you don't live inside you cannot enter the checkpoint so that's why they don't give permits to people that's why we come in weekend, on weekends a lot of guys and we go to the houses when anybody needs anything in this area we go to help them because I know if those people left their houses the next settlement is going to be my house yeah we hope um... <coughs> Uh, that we'll be able to uh, develop also collaborations with you to strengthen our joint struggle uh, uh, together for our joint future and actually given your courage uh, uh, I'm quite sure that our struggle is going to succeed to topple these fascist Kahanist uh, settlers and to establish a uh, really equal society here and social justice. Uh, so again, we salute you. Thank you very much for hosting us. Uh, you are more than welcome.